Hello, GLL. Um, my name is Patrice Lawrence, and I should say that I'm a writer for children and young people, but I think I write books where children and young people are at the heart of them, but we shouldn't be snobbish about this. We should read all types of books. So I'd like to think that adults read my books too. I want to tell you a little bit about my latest book for young adults, which is Eight Pieces of Silver. I actually said for young adults, it's about a young adult, but it's for anyone um, and it's a mystery. And I want to talk you through four steps to writing your own mystery. So Eight Pieces of Silver is about um, a young woman called Bex, who's sort of 15, 16, and her sister Silver, who's 18. And I'm just gonna read from the very beginning of it and then tell you a little bit more. Bex, mum said, fix up. Don't complain, just fix up. We've been clearing up after you for 15 years. That ain't strictly true. Well, for mum it's true, but Justin's more recent. It's been seven years clearing up after me for him. Anyway, I got home from school and found toast and marmite balanced on the edge of the table. The cornflakes box knocked over like the cereals trying to escape. Milk left out. It was like breakfast tried to commit suicide. I sent a message to mum straight away. Silver didn't do the clearing up. She's in her room sulking. That's when mum told me to fix up. When I replied, she said the plane's taken off and the steward's walking, steward's walking towards her with a look on his face. I know, Mum. She'll turn the phone off because she can never find flight mode and then shove it in the seat pocket in front. She won't turn it on again until her and Justin land in Japan. That's going to be more than 12 hours. I suppose I should leave them alone. It's the first few hours of their honeymoon. If it's still a honeymoon when you're heading out nearly two months after you got married. But Silver, though... I was a witness standing right next to her when she promised our parents she'd make sure I was good while they're away. She even looked them in the eye when she promised. But what's she done instead? She's left dying breakfast all over the kitchen for me to find when I get home from school. I don't want her setting that as a mood for the next two weeks. But thinking about it, even mash-up cornflakes and bad milk is better than some of the moods she's been cracking recently. Damn, it's going to be a long two weeks as Silver keeps her sulk up all that time. So that's the beginning. It's the books told in two points of view. Um, in Bex, who's like the main, I suppose, protagonist, the person who's got to solve the mystery. And Silver, who's gone missing and is also telling her story at the same time. Kind of like a backstory. And they kind of meet at the middle, um, at the end. So how do you write a mystery? Well, step number one for me is you have to have your main character. I knew from the very beginning I wanted to write Bex as a black working class Londoner lesbian. Lots of reasons for that. I just think there are lots of voices that we don't hear in YA these days. And I just wanted someone who isn't usually the hero solving the mystery to be the hero and solve the mystery. Um, so I want you to think about who your character could be. So we're just going to do a really quick exercise. So this is a lovely present uh, from a friend. Um, so I want you to just look at this and just quickly, and to do these things really quickly, because they come at the top of your head, don't edit yourself. So quickly look at this and just write down a colour associated with this. Quickly. Okay, you've got your colour. Now write down anything else associated with this. It could be a texture, it could be what it's made of, it could be the shape, just one word, quickly. Okay, that's it. Look at those two words, put them in whichever you, order you want, and that is the name of your character. Give them an age, give them a gender if you want, but also they don't necessarily have to be a person. It could be a historical character. They could be anybody, they could be young, old, artificial intelligence that's saved in sort of the cloud. They could be uh, the elf on a shelf. I actually read a book recently um, called The Free Range Detective Agency where the detective is actually a turkey. Uh, I think it's written by Jed Lynch and illustrated by Steve Stone if you want to find it. Now, you need to just build up their character a bit more. So with Bex, I knew what her voice was going to be because I could almost picture her. So this is a quick exercise that you can do to just build up a little backstory around your character. So I'm just going to share a screen for a moment. So 
So I want you to think of your name for a moment. And in those sort of days when I used to do sort of workshops in, in classes, this is something you can do to interview each other. So, you know, is your name associated with a religion or faith? I mean, mine is Patrice. I'm named after my father, who's called Patrick, who's born on St. Patrick's Day. Are you named after a family member? Yeah, I'm named after my father. People, or do people pronounce your name wrong? Um, I sometimes get Pat Rice, that's my brother, that's Delibria. My stepdad calls me Patrice, he's Italian. Um, your name's associated with a film or a song. Well, not in real life though. Um, the first other Patrice I ever knew was Patrice Russian, who sing, sang a song called Forget Me Not, which was sampled by Will Smith for the um, theme of Men in Black. Am I named after someone famous? Well, if you call a saint famous, maybe. Your name is associated with the natural world. Lawrence, I think it means crown of laurels in Roman that they used to give winners. Your name's associated with day, week, year or season when you were born. Well, mine is the 17th of March, which is St. Patrick's Day. You have different first names used by different people. So um, for me, you know, so this is, you know, does your name get shortened? Don't let's, so that's an expert one. Does your name, do you have a nickname? Um, so my mum calls me Pat, except for when she's cross and she calls me Patrice. Um, I was fostered for the first four years of my life. And my foster family called me Patsy. Um, so who, who, who calls you what? Because that, that sort of, in a sense, can describe your relationship with different people. Or do you always use a shortened version of your name? Do people mispronounce your name? Do you think, do you know what, I'm not even going to bother telling them? Or uh, do you prefer a shortened version of your name? Now think about the name that you've written down. Think about the type of character um, that you want to write about. And then think about, do a really quick exercise about, imagine him telling someone, this is how I got my name. So make up a really quick story, a paragraph, thinking about some of these things here or something completely different about how your character got their name. So how is your character's name pronounced? Uh, do people pronounce it differently? Does it annoy them? Uh, teachers in school sometimes got my name wrong a bit or quite a lot of bit. I sometimes get called Patricia. I've got called Caprice, Caprice really. Um, so just write a name, how about, a little story about how your character got their name. So once you've done that, you should have a bit more sense of who your character is. So step number two in writing your mystery um, is you need to know what the crime is. First, I actually want to say, I forgot about Bex. Her real name is Rydbeckia, which is a flower which has a, uh, golden petals on the outside and a brown middle. And um, Bex's mum liked the name of Beckia because she imagined that her daughter would be the opposite. She'd sort of be brown on the outside and have a golden heart. So number two, what is your crime? In Eight Pieces of Silver, the, I suppose the sort of crime is that silver goes missing. So Bex, as this mystery, has to find her. So it doesn't need to be a crime, but it needs to be a mystery. Has something gone missing? Has something lost? Has somebody completely changed? They look like the same person, but you know that they've been taken over by somebody. What is a question? So what is that mystery at the heart of your story? And it's really a good idea to find that first, decide that first, and then you can work backwards to the why. So yeah, what is that mystery? You wake up, you haven't got a shadow. You wake up, your cat says hello to you in human. It could be anything. Number three, why? And this is where you have to think, what, why has your mystery happened? So for me, I read a book called The Incurable Romantic. I actually first read excerpts of it that were in a newspaper. So it's basically written by a, um, I suppose a psychotherapist who is in real life, is writing up case studies um, of, of people that he's seen. And in some ways they are all related to the idea of romantic love. The first one that kept popping up all the time was about a woman who's probably about my age. She's happily married. She has a dental appointment. She's put under general anesthetic. Then when she wakes up, she is completely in love with her dentist, completely in love with her dentist. She's obsessed 
with her dentist. She still loves her husband, but she'd go and stand on street corners, just looking up into the sort of room where the dentist's office is. She'd send him letters. Um, and in the end, the dentist accepted um, a post in Dubai because his wife was getting a little bit fed up with it. So they could just move away. And the woman kept a little, kind of like a shrine really, as a dentist of, you know, appointment cards and brochures. So that kind of made me think about Silver, that she is obsessed. So at first when I wrote her, she was a little bit more of a sort of stalker, because also I just didn't want her to be a victim. I wanted her to have sort of control and agency. But then there's another case study in here about a uh, young man, and again, he's married, but he's, his wife found out he's seen these other women and he's seen them because he's actually obsessed with women falling in love with him. Uh, so he goes, takes them out for meals, they look around property together. And the moment they say that he loves them, he moves on. So I thought, what happens when somebody's obsessed with somebody falling in love with them, meets somebody who's obsessed with somebody they think they love? So you've got Silver and you've got Logan. And that's kind of at the heart of this mystery. Obsessional love meets obsessional falling in love. So I kind of knew the heart of the mystery and I needed to develop the plot around that. So that leads me really to number four, the clues. That for me was a fun part because I wanted a traditional mystery in a sense where somebody goes into a room and actually finds clues and has to kind of untangle these clues. Um, and sometimes, you know, in big murder mysteries, you get bodies and you get trails of blood, and you get broken windows, or, you know, you get sort of uh, glass tubes with the traces of poison on them. Um, and you get, uh, you know, you might find like a dust-free patch on a shelf where a trophy once was. Well, actually, I wanted to write something that was more everyday. And what are the everyday clues that tell other people something about you? So I thought, for instance, about when I used to go into uh, Waitrose, a supermarket, and they used to give you, you paid for your, your goods, and they used to give you a little green counter, and there were various, um, I suppose, containers with, sh with like shoots into them. Um, and you, they all represented a different charity and you could put your little counter into your charity of choice and the shop would donate to that charity. Um, but I think, you know, we leave all sorts of things in our pockets because sometimes I wouldn't know and I'd leave it in my pocket. And when we look in our pockets, there's all clues to our lives. There might be counters, that might be for a waitress or there might be for um, a cloakroom or there might be from a game of Connect Four, you know, all different things that taken out of context, it's like, what are they? So I started to think about what those different things were. So I just thought there might be a counter, like a green counter, that could be anything. Um, I also thought about popular culture. So I really thought about um, Black Panther and about how meaningful it was, particularly to many black people who never see films that are in that big popular culture with loads of money spent on them that have got little in-jokes that are just for us. So I thought, how could I use that in a mystery? And I suppose thinking about that, I thought about fandoms and the things that lots of different people share. So I thought, sort of, I thought about K-pop, Korean pop music, and something that Silver and Bex as sisters might share. Because Silver's had quite a tough time. Her mum, biological mum died when she was uh, 13. Her dad started seeing uh, Bex's mum and used to take her around to sort of Bex and her mum's flat. And Silver was still kind of sad. Uh, she liked this new family, but still, still even now misses her mum. And people don't know really about the extent of her grief and loss. And one of the ways that Bex and Silver kind of bonded when they were a little bit younger was through K-pop music and through dancing to sort of K-pop choreography. Um, another time I was looking at, um, I've got a little picture, photograph from Mother's Day of me and my daughter when she was a baby. And I kind of looked at the back of it and there's a little curl of her hair from when she was a baby. So all of these things that were in my life made me think, how can I use those from clues in a mystery? So imagine that you've gone uh, missing and somebody, a friend, your best friend is going to find you. 
but they find lots of clues maybe in your room about things they don't quite know about you. What would they be? So think about that and maybe transfer some of that to your character. Um, so that's the last thing really. So if you want to write a mystery, like eight pieces of silver, think about your, uh, the four steps are, think about who your character is and, and give them a bit of a backstory, give them a bit of depth. And you can do that maybe by writing about how they got their name, who gave it to them, do they like it, what is it? And that can tell you quite a lot about their history. Two, decide what the mystery is, what's gone missing, what's changed, what needs to be solved. Number three, decide why that is. So in my case, uh, silver goes missing and the mystery is a result of obsessional love meeting, obsessional falling in love. And four, decide what your clues are and who's going to solve them. Thank you. I hope you like eight pieces of silver and I hope you write your own mystery. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.